Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1137. So when it comes to business, I think done is better than perfect. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, automotive enthusiasts. I'm revved up on a couple of cups of coffee and very excited to introduce today's very special guest, Patrick Thiel. Hey, Patrick, are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? Absolutely. All right. Patrick Thiel is the co-founder, along with his business partner, Gianni Abilio, of Corsa Luso, the enthusiast coffee, an automotive-inspired lifestyle brand. Patrick manages daily operations, retail, and e-commerce oversight and business development opportunities for the company. As a lifelong motorsport enthusiast, Patrick grew up around a variety of cars, motorcycles, and boats, and learned at a very young age that his passion involving driving anything with a motor was very strong. Patrick also works as a consultant in the international trade industry, specializing in sales of food, hardware, equipment, and vehicles. When he's not working, he enjoys traveling, snowboarding, driving fun cars, and of course, drinking a great cup of coffee. By the way, I'll let our listeners know I had the uh, pleasure of meeting Patrick at the Revival Road Party during Car Week and at Pete Stout's Rare Shades event at Bruce Canapa Shop, where he and his team were serving delicious coffee to keep us all going during a very busy week. I appreciate that. So, Patrick, I've told our listeners just a little bit about you. Take a brief moment and share a little bit more about your business and a very obvious passion for automobiles. Well, thank you for the introduction. And those were two great events. We were uh, happy to be there serving coffee. So I've always loved cars, and I decided I wanted to create a special high-quality coffee, especially for car enthusiasts. Um, so in January of 2017, I started working on Corsa Lusso, and we launched in uh, August of that year during Monterey Car Week, um, and we just recently celebrated our anniversary. Uh, we actually did six events during Monterey Car Week with uh, – Companies like Pagani, Lamborghini, Canapa Design, Singer, and more. As you mentioned, I also work as a consultant focusing on international trade. So I work with uh, a lot of large American companies such as Kraft, Nestle, Unilever, Clorox, and General Mills, for example, and help them with sales and marketing and distribution overseas, uh, particularly to the South Pacific. And besides that, I I also help... uh, our VIP clients um, purchasing cars overseas, including people like uh, the president of Micronesia. And so those are always fun when I get to do, uh, you know, the special uh, bulletproof cars and things like that. So Busy guy. No wonder you're, you're in the coffee trade. You need a lot of caffeine to keep yourself going. I mean, <laughs> uh, one of the things I noticed about you and your team, Patrick, yeah, you guys were everywhere during car week. I mean, all those events you mentioned, Every time I go some, to one of these events, oh, there's the coffee guys again. This is cool. And so I said, you know, I've got to have Patrick and his team and our business partner, and we'll have uh, your the other half of your business on the show eventually here. But uh, to expose what you're doing to my listeners, because I think it's so cool. And the fact that you've kind of diversified your life into all sorts of cool things surrounding cars is very, very neat. And as we continue on your journey, I always like to start with a success quote or a mantra. This is some kind of saying that may be important to you. It's a nice way to get the inspirational tires turning or the uh, espresso lever pulling down, I guess, <laughs> pulling pulling a shot here. So Patrick, take the wheel. I like that. The quote that I like to go by is better a diamond with a flaw than a pebble without. And uh, basically what that means is uh, when it comes to business, I think done is better than perfect. And, um, uh, I have spent a lot of time in previous business ideas obsessing over details, trying to make everything perfect. And ultimately, I I spun my tires and never accomplished anything with it. And um, obviously, you don't want to sacrifice quality in the interest of finishing a project, but there's definitely diminishing returns uh, if you're focusing too much on perfection. And, you know, I had tons of ideas in my life where I would be really excited and, and plan them and come up with business plans and never actually pull the trigger on anything. And so I decided with uh, Corsa Luso, I was just going to jump in and figure the things out as I went. And there's been a lot of, a lot of issues, a lot of things that we've learned along the way. And you know, sometimes things don't turn out how you plan, but you learn from it. And 
that's been my mantra and I'm progressing uh, the company and we've learned a lot and I wouldn't do it another way now. Well, you know, this is an interesting way to say that, but I, I love the way you phrased it. And it's really important, especially for young business people, because I, I kind of fall into that trap. I'm a perfectionist. I want everything to be absolutely spit spot before I put it out there. And when I started Cars Yeah, that was getting in my way. And I talked to a lot of people who said, you just need to record a show and start putting them out there. You'll get better as you go. Things will improve. People will forget. And they will just focus on what you're doing now. And it, it's an incredibly, incredibly valuable lesson. And like you said, it's not that you just jump into something and just put out junk. I mean, you have to kind of work it through the best you can. But if you don't just put your foot out there and start going around the track, you'll never get on the track. So I love that. It's a great way to go through business. And obviously, it's worked well for you, especially with Corsa Luso, because the presentation you guys had at these events over Car Week, that's my exposure to you. It was very professional. Your website is really cool. And you can always adjust websites and change them. So. That's the golden nugget I think you shared right off the bat with those listeners out there that want to start their own business. Just do it, right? Absolutely. I think um, execution is everything. Anybody can have an idea, but actually doing it and figuring things out is how you're going to be successful. Great story and philosophy to share here. Well, let's talk about your personal passion for cars and share a pivotal moment as you remember it that you knew you were indeed going to be a car guy for life. Well, I would say that my dad is definitely responsible for my uh, passion for motorsports. He was a world champion offshore powerboat racer back in the 90s. And wow. I just remember, you know, helping him prep his boats for these races and, you know, hearing the engine roar while we're testing them and then packing up the truck and driving down to Key West or Ocean City or Miami or wherever the race was. And that's kind of where I fell in love with racing and the smell of race fuel and the thrill of competition. And so ever since I was four or five years old, I just, any opportunity I had to drive something, I would jump on it. And so I remember uh, my dad bought me this little, uh, it was a mini monster truck with a gas powered engine in it. And I used to terrorize my neighborhood with it. And <laughs> my neighbors would call and complain that I was ripping up the grass in their, in their yard. And so, uh, unfortunately, uh, I had to sell that and, um, then I remember my neighbor, uh, was my friend across the street, got a dirt bike. And the next day, my dad showed up and he had bought me a, a faster one. <laughs> and oh, so he kind course. of got that, got <laughs> that competition in my DNA. And so um, I, from there, I grew up racing motorcycles and jet skis and snowmobiles and anything I could get my hands on. And that interest kind of changed and transitioned when I got my driver's license. And ever since then, I've been into cars and I still enjoy all the fun stuff, but cars are my main focus now. Wow. Well, very cool. Well, obviously, your dad's competition bloodline uh, played into your life. And I, you must have kind of pinched yourself during car week when you guys were serving delicious coffee to all of us who needed a little shot of espresso to keep going because that week <laughs> will wear you down. I mean, the cars that you got to hang around, you were at the premier events. I mean, being at Bruce Canapa shop and Revival Road, the cars they do and Pagani, I mean, all these people, did you ever just stop and go, whoa, how'd I get here? You know, Monterey Car Week is very special to both me and uh, my partner, Gianni. We went to school in Monterey and I lived there for about eight years and Car Week was my favorite week of the year. Every year I look forward to it. And so, yeah. you know, when we launched our coffee last year at Car Week, we were just in some hotels and just kind of doing word of mouth stuff. And had you told me I would have done one of those events at that time, I would have been through the roof. But to do six events with that caliber was just amazing. And yeah. so, yeah, I mean, we were surrounded by tens of millions of dollars worth of amazing cars. And so <laughs> it definitely yeah. was like a dream come true. Well, not to mention Singer, what Rob's done there. Rob's been a guest on the show. Bruce Canop has been a guest on the show. I've had a designer from Bagani on the show. I mean, all these incredible people, and uh, you guys, I will say again, uh, you guys did a really, really awesome job. The presentation was professional. Everything about your whole operation there was at the level of these brands. So kudos to you and your team for what you've done. Uh, you're going to need to have, hire some more people, I think, for next year because I, <laughs> I see you in 12 places next year. So uh, it's going to well, be I, great. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank yeah, you very absolutely. Much. I appreciate that. No doubt. Well, Patrick, let's take a look at some of these roads you've driven down. Talk about a big challenge or a big failure you face along the way. You've gotten your hands in a lot of stuff, which means you've probably had 
Well, I know you've had great successes, but you've probably bumped up against some things that have challenged you. I'd love for you to walk us through that. Tell us what that situation was all about and what you learned from it, because that's the most valuable lesson. Uh, well, keeping with our Car Week theme, uh, I don't think most people outside of our, our group uh, knew this, but we had tons of issues during Car Week. You know, the equipment, we probably had a roughly $75,000 in coffee equipment. You know, the first event we show up and our main espresso machine is missing its water pump, which is oh, no. useless without that. Yeah, so we had our backup machine that we used. The next morning was uh, McCall's MotorWorks revival, and there were going to be 3,000 people in attendance. And so our small espresso machine was not going to cut it. So we were ripping the water pump out of the smaller machine, putting it back in the big one. We're talking hours before this event started with no oh my gosh. plan. That was terrifying. Uh, we had a great team, and, and they were able to salvage it. Unfortunately, later on, we had to, due to some power issues, we had to take that water pump back out and put it back in the uh, smaller machine. So uh. there was a lot of scrambling and power. You wouldn't believe how much power those, uh, you know, that equipment needs. And so that was a challenge, making sure that we had the right... Uh, okay, because so being in a remote location... Yeah, lots of times there isn't a good power source, so you're running through extension cords, which cut down power. Wow, well, I would have never known, but I can't imagine, especially these level of these events and the clients and the importance of these clients, to run into those problems. I mean, what's a good, a good takeaway that you might offer somebody who finds himself in that very desperate situation to help them kind of realize that they can get through it? There's, there's options. Yeah, so I mean, in in those instances, there was no benefit in pointing fingers or assigning blame. We had to just come up with a strategy and improvise and adapt to the situation. And so, you know, we just tried to remain calm and figure out a solution. And fortunately, we had a great team and we were able to figure it out. Finger pointing is is not going to help. And so it's all about adapting to your your, uh, challenges. So what's the big lesson you learned so that next year, if these issues or this pump issue occurs, how will you deal with that? Uh, I think the secret is to um, bring your own equipment, not rent it, not uh, borrow (laughs) it. Don't expect favors. Having your own stuff is always going to be the best bet. Yeah. And having the key parts, spares of those key parts, just like being at a racetrack, just in case they go bad, because you know what? They probably will, especially when you're out, out in the field. Yeah. Yeah, that, that that clutch will blow up, I guarantee you, if you don't have a spare one in your parts box. Again, you guys did a wonderful job of not showing any of that anxiety that was uh, pulsing through your veins, for sure. Let's shift gears and go to the other end of the spectrum. I, I would assume in your business, because you've, you've delved into so many things, you've had some great aha moments in business that kind of steered you down a new path that maybe you didn't expect. Could you walk us through maybe one of those? Yeah, so I guess I will probably touch on um, why I started Corsa Luso. I've always wanted to start a business, especially one that would get me involved in the automotive industry because that's where my passion really lies. And I've always heard people say to listen for a need in the market. You know, somebody saying, I really wish they made blank. And so I would go to cars and coffee events and see everyone drinking Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts or a cheap gas station coffee. And I realized that these cars and coffee events were really lacking when it comes to the coffee. So that was kind of my moment where I realized this could be an opportunity to provide an improved and like a tailored product to a niche market. And so because of my background in the food industry, I had contacts in place already to, to make this happen. And so I got in touch with a graphic designer who does everything from Formula One artwork to um, the Kraft Easy Mac uh, mac and cheese packaging. Uh, and so he was instrumental in putting together the branding and helping us create an identity that our customers would appreciate and connect with. And so from there, we started sourcing the right coffee and quality was of utmost importance to us. Uh, We were targeting high-end car enthusiasts and didn't want to serve them cheap coffee. So we work with a coffee trader who imports coffee from all over the world. And we're proud that we only offer specialty grade coffee, which is the highest quality coffee available. And it has very strict criteria to meet that distinction. Yeah, every single coffee we offer will always be specialty grade. And, you know, since launching, we've uh, participated in tons of cars and coffee events and rallies, track days, races. Uh, We even served coffee for a NASCAR team at one of their races. So it's been uh, incredibly exciting and a fun year. And 
I've loved meeting all the people with similar interests to mine and anyone who can appreciate a Ferrari just as much as an espresso. So it's been uh, a lot of fun and wouldn't change it. Well, it's very, very cool. Now, in addition to serving great coffee at events, you also sell coffee through your website. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. So we do um, retail sales through our website. We have some wholesale partners that we work with, but primarily right through our website. And we do uh, freshly roasted small batch coffee. We write the date it was roasted. Uh, on the back of each bag, it tells you where the coffee is from and tasting notes and all sorts of information so that you can learn more about a coffee as you drink it. Nice. Cool. Well done. Well, let's have a little bit of fun and talk about your first really special car. That first car that you got that had great meaning to you. It might have been your first car. could have been your 10th car. I don't know, but maybe something you saved up for. But talk to us about that car and tell us maybe a special memory you have about that vehicle. Uh, well, my, my first car was an old Mercedes that my parents gave me, and it had about 300,000 miles on it, and I hated it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my, my friends called it the grandma car, and uh, <laughs> you know, maybe maybe I was being ungrateful, but I just didn't enjoy it. And so I decided I wanted to buy my own car and make it exactly how I liked. And I got my license shortly after the Fast and the Furious movies came out. So that was Uh-oh. definitely <laughs> <laughs> the style car that I was interested in. You know, those cars were the coolest thing in the world to me at the time. So I purchased a Honda Prelude and I had been working part-time after school in a restaurant. And so I used all the money I made and dumped it all into that car. And so I put it body kit and the carbon fiber hood and custom wheels and exhaust and then I painted it uh, bright orange and nice. it looked like it could have been featured and it was a very successful effort in getting the attention of the police I got tons of tickets and, uh-oh. you know I, uh-oh. yeah it definitely was a troublemaker when it comes to that you know and I, I wouldn't be caught dead in that car now as <laughs> definitely has not uh, well but um, at the time that car might as well have been a Lamborghini I was so excited when I picked it up from the body shop after they put it together and painted it, you know, I was proud to have worked for it myself. And it provided me with my work ethic and this sense of accomplishment. And that's what I use to this day to motivate myself. So nice. it was definitely a, a good way to get some responsibility and, and some pride in uh, what I've accomplished. Well, let's just say, me perhaps like your taste in coffee, you've matured a little bit over the years and uh, <laughs> evolved. Absolutely. But yeah. W- We've all had those first uh, hot rod cars, if you will. So sounds very cool. Is, is there a car you've owned and sold that you really wish you had back? Yeah. In college, I bought myself a brand new um, Subaru WRX STI, which is one of the little rally cars they made. Oh, and yeah. I have been drooling over those for years. This is still kind of in the Fast and Furious uh, <laughs> days. And it was probably a little financially irresponsible, but... I didn't care at the time. I loved everything about that car and drove it everywhere. I put uh, like 100,000 miles on it in a couple of years. And those were all pretty hard miles. Started getting expensive to maintain when, you know, the turbo and the clutch and parts of the transmission needed to be replaced. And being a, a broke college student, I knew that, you know, I didn't want to get in a position where I couldn't fix the car as much as I hated to, I had to sell the car and I miss it. They have a very distinct sound to them. So I always hear them coming and enjoy seeing the people uh, driving them around. And Yeah, that would be the car I miss most, I think, of all cars I've had. Yeah, those are cool. I see a lot of those up here in the Pacific Northwest where I live. Subaru is a, a mark that you see a lot of, especially with their off-road cars. But that WRX is just, yeah, with the uh, rally history and heritage of that brand and that car. Uh, and, boy, they're just quick, too. So, yeah. Definitely a car to get yourself in trouble in. And uh, Yeah, I had my fair share of trouble with that car, too. So. <laughs> Your insurance but, uh, companies love you. They must have a picture of you on the wall. Our favorite yeah, client. <laughs> <laughs> they've made some money from me. So Probably so. Probably so. Let's talk about today and tomorrow and what has you excited and fired up about Corsa Luso, the enthusiast coffee. What are you working on? What looks? What does the future look like that has you really fired up? Yeah. So, I mean, the past year has been a bit of a beta test for us. We wanted to figure out what works, what doesn't work, who we want to partner with and things like that. And so we've kind of got that dialed in now and we're focusing on continuing to grow the brand and really get it out there. We have a bunch of new roasts that we're going to be offering soon. We're redoing our packaging and we're also going to be doing a a collaboration. I can't announce with who yet, but uh should be pretty exciting and, and something a little bit different than you're used to seeing. So we're really excited about that. 
Uh, we're also going to be doing a lot more content creation. So we have a lot of plans for video concepts as well as more like YouTube uh, blog style content. I mean, really any excuse to get behind the wheel with some fun cars and drive interesting roads around the world will be a good time, especially with some good coffee. So we're uh, really excited to share our plans with the car world soon. And, you know, we've got a lot of a lot of big things cooking. So we're cool. excited for that. I'm excited, too. Well, here's a very introspective question for you, Patrick. If you woke up tomorrow and you were a car, what would Patrick be and why? That is an interesting question. And <laughs> I think I would like to say I would be maybe an Audi R8. I like cool. to think of myself as uh, hardworking and capable, but a little bit understated. I'm not exactly uh, the most flashy person out there. And I feel like that kind of describes the R8 to the T. That the R8 is, has been on my radar for quite some time as a car I'd like to purchase, too. So I feel like it suits my personality well. And uh, I think that would be... Uh, that would be me if I had to. There you go. Yeah, those are those are cool cars. I, I've liked them ever since they came out. I was very lucky. I was at Miller Motorsport Park for some LMP racing, and Audi had two cars out there, and they were letting us take them out on the track and drive them around. This is when they pretty much were new to the market. And oh my gosh, I just I really wanted one even more after that. I just like the fact that they're so different, and. They just, it's like Audi as a brand. They just kind of don't try to be like everybody else in many respects. And when you think of the Audi TT as a great example, something completely different. Very nicely said, Patrick. An R8. I like it. Well, Patrick, up next is the last lap. But before we put the pedal to the metal, let's say thank you to today's Cars Yeah sponsors. Everyone who knows me knows I'm really picky when it comes to my cars and keeping them looking new. I'm a huge fan of Covercraft floor mats. I've protected my vehicle with their products for decades. Want to keep your vehicle's interior looking new? It's easy with Covercraft floor mats. They will protect your vehicle's factory carpets from daily abuse, weather, pets, children, weekend adventures, and those everyday spills. It's a fast, easy, and stylish way to keep your vehicle looking new. Covercraft floor mats come in a wide variety of styles, materials, and configurations, all designed for maximum protection. In addition to Premier Plush and Berber Custom Floor Mats, you'll also find cargo liners, canine cargo area liners, dash covers, and sunscreens. Enhance your vehicle's looks while protecting the factory finishes with easy-to-install and easy-to-clean floor mats. Covercraft is the right choice. Learn more today at Covercraft.com and tell them Mark at Cars Yeah sent you. That's Covercraft.com. What's every automotive enthusiast dream? To design and build that perfect garage. My friends at Metron Garage are a group of creative talents who've combined their passion for cars with their careers in architecture. Their service includes unique garage design and state-of-the-art fabrication. They will create the coolest custom garage for you and your vehicles. Metron Garage's system features fully engineered commercial-grade material and structural framing that's stronger than traditional construction. Their designs are pre-engineered to meet your building codes for fast, bolt-together construction. With over 25 years of experience, you'll see a 3D rendering to visualize your custom garage, and the final structure will fulfill all your storage needs. Contact Metron Garage today and begin realizing your dream garage. Go to metrongarage.com. That's metrongarage.com. Garage is built for discerning enthusiasts. Where it's not just a garage, it's where your dream garage comes true. Okay, Patrick, we're back and we're entering the last lap. I'm going to fire off a series of questions and ask you to give our listeners some very quick blips of the throttle answers. So here we go. What's the best automotive advice you've ever received? Uh, that would be not to get in over your head with a car, not to buy <laughs> yeah. much car for your wallet. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, kind of learned that, kind of learned that with that Subaru. Um, you want to take your time and build your way up to your dream car and not jump into it right away. And so, Fortunately and unfortunately, been a little more financially responsible lately. So um, <laughs> good for you. <laughs> waiting, waiting to pull the trigger on the supercar until it makes sense. Yeah, don't strap yourself with a depreciating asset. It's just foolish. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't do it. I know it. Take it from one who's done it. Both Patrick and I, guilty, guilty. But uh, learn from our mistakes. Do not do it. It's silly. Now, would you share one of your personal habits you believe has contributed to your many successes in business? Yeah, I think one of the um, 
the biggest things that I do that helps me is making lists. Nothing yeah. helps me stay more organized and on point than a to-do list. And uh, for me personally, the more granular, the better. When I started Course Aluso, I made a list of every single thing I could think of that I needed to do. And the satisfaction you get from crossing something off that list, no matter how small, I feel like it gives you momentum and yep. uh, allows you to move forward and, and not procrastinate. And so for me, that's been the biggest thing I've done to become more accomplished and, and more efficient with my time. I'll tell you, Patrick, I've had some hugely successful very mature business people on this show. And that's one of the things I hear over and over that they attribute to their success is uh, lists, creating lists. And then the satisfaction of checking those things off just keeps you, it's like, ah, oh, it just empowers you. So nicely done. Now, uh, how about a resource? There are some great resources out there for us enthusiasts these days. Is there one that you'd like to share? I have two, if that's okay. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, for for great coffee, uh, <laughs> com. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> but for uh, just in general, for car enthusiasts, I'm going to uh, mention our friends over at the Motoring Club, and they are a company that offers memberships with access to pre-negotiated discounts for a variety of things, uh, such as you know everything from tires and glass and car inspections all the way to track days and things like that. And so I believe nice. it's maybe fifty dollars a year, and if you buy a set of tires or really anything with it, you'll you'll make your money back. So. They're cool. a great company. Highly recommend them. Is their website themotoringclub.com? I believe it's themotoringclub.co. .co. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Awesome. We'll, we'll put a link to that on Patrick's show notes page on the Cars yeah website. Now, if I could do something magical and arrange for you to sit down and have a drink with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased, who would that individual be? Personally, I think I would go with uh, Elon Musk. Um, uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> of, <laughs> I'm sure that's a popular answer, but... I don't know of anyone who is doing more to change the world uh, than Elon Musk. In my opinion, he's the da Vinci of our time. And in every aspect, all of these different businesses that he's doing, I find them so interesting. And I've read quite a few books about him and read, you know, anything I can about him. I listen to his, you know, when he introduces a new car or a new product. And I just find him very fascinating. So that would be my number one choice, I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um I would love to have him on the show. Getting a hold of him is, at least at my level, is almost impossible, but I'm trying. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's a, such an interesting character. And whether you like him or not, or love Tesla or not, or whatever, you can't help but sit back and admire what that guy's done in his life, uh, in business and in his thinking. I think he's, I think he's an alien. He's, he's at some other level. Uh, yeah, thinking I've, it's, I've heard that before. <laughs> yeah, well, I think even... Yeah, there was a great interview with Josh Groban where he, uh, I think he says, yeah, I'm an alien. <laughs> so there you go. He admitted yeah. it right there. Uh, I was just going to say his, his level of thinking and, you know, the way that he approaches things is just so fundamentally different from anybody else. So definitely deserving. Even if you go back and look at how he came into the country and where he came from and how he's maneuvered himself is just a testament to the different kind of level that he thinks about and, and what he's doing and the businesses that he's created and bought and sold. And I was just an incredible guy. I'd love to spend some time talking with him. I think it'd be very, very interesting, uh, if not enlightening, if not odd. But I think it'd be all those above. That's for sure. I, in fact, I just uh, watched the three-hour interview with Josh, uh, with Elon, uh, over the weekend, my son suggested. And, of course, it was the infamous one where he was smoking marijuana on the show, which by the end of the show made it even more interesting because I think they were both pretty much wasted. But if you take that aside and the silliness of that and just listen to what he talked about and how he spoke, I, too, would like to be included in that uh, magic wand moment that I, I arranged for you to sit down and have a drink with him, a nice cup of coffee or two or three. Now, how about a book? Is there a book you've read that you think our listeners would enjoy? Yeah, one of my favorites is called Zero to One by Peter Thiel. Uh, unfortunately, we're not related, uh, but uh, he's got uh, almost the same last name as me. It's a great book, kind of um, challenges the way you think about starting a business and helps you to create something different and revolutionary versus just a cookie cutter business idea. And so I found it very interesting. So that would be my recommendation. Zero to one. Yeah, great book. I'll remind our listeners, I put a link to that book on Patrick's show notes page on the Cars yeah website. By the way, there's a place on the Cars yeah website called Guest Recommended Books where there's 
way over a thousand books recommended there by my inspiring automotive enthusiast guests. I made it real easy for a click to buy. Zero to one, if you're thinking about starting a business, that is a great book to get your hands on and learn a few things. All right, Patrick, we're up to the checkered flag, and this last question could be a bit of a doozy, but it's fun. Today, I'm going to buy you any cool collector car on the planet, but there's some rules. You can't sell it to buy a bunch of uh, espresso equipment with. You got to keep it. <laughs> you have to drive it. No garage queens here on Cars, yeah. And uh, it's the only cool collector car you can have in your garage. You can keep your daily driver, but this is the only one. That means you got to pick wisely because you're going to have to live with this car. So what can I buy you? Well, I appreciate you buying me a car. Um, <laughs> you're I welcome. Think, <laughs> I think I would go with a Ferrari F50. I think um, that's an iconic car. Uh, the gated manual and V12, and, yeah. you know, since those are so those are going away, so to have an iconic car like that would be amazing. And you know, something you can take the roof off with and cruise down the coast uh, on the PCH or something. I think that's the way to go. You know, there's uh, a lot of, yeah, there's a lot yeah. of modern cars that have uh, more technology and you know improved aerodynamics or whatever. But I think that you know I grew up idolizing that car, so that would be my yeah. choice, absolutely. You know, during Car Week. Uh, I brought a friend with me during that week that I went to high school with. His name is Steve Bernstein. He came and took a lot of photographs for me because I usually carry a camera. And it, he, he freed me up to be able to do more networking and talking with people while he was shooting photographs. He, he shot thousands of wonderful photographs. I've been sharing them on my Facebook page. Steve had never been to Car Week. He's a car guy, consummate car guy, has some awesome cars. Every time we went anywhere, he just kept going, oh, my gosh. What? <laughs> You know, not even the shows, just driving around the streets of Monterey and Carmel. And we went out to pick up our our quail tickets, and we pulled into this little private school parking lot where they had their little ticket pickup place. And lo and behold, this guy pulls in and parks right next to us in a Ferrari. And Steve's (laughs) like, where else could you go on a Wednesday morning and park at a little school and a Ferrari F50 pulls up next to you and parks? You picked a really nice car, for sure. They are spectacular. Well, Patrick, you've taken me on an awesome ride today. I've enjoyed having a cup of your delicious Luso coffee with you, uh, espresso with you. It's been absolutely spectacular. I've really enjoyed learning more about you and what you're doing. I want to thank you for sharing your journey. Could you offer us one little parting piece of wisdom or guidance before you uh, sip down that last bit of espresso and speed off down the highway in that Ferrari F50? Um, Kind of touching on what I said earlier, you know, if you have an idea... Just start working on it. You don't want to be reckless with your time and your money. Don't waste years analyzing and strategizing and not doing anything productive. So just start, figure things out as you go. And, uh, you know, there's tons of things you're not going to know. There's things you don't know that you don't know. So no planning is going to fix that. So just get started and figure it out and you will not regret it. And what are the many ways for our listeners to learn more about you and Corsa Luso? Um, so our Instagram is our, our biggest uh, social media outlet, and that is just uh, at Corsaluso. Um, and then our, our website is Corsaluso.com. We uh, have a blog on there where we post um, events that we've been to. We have a big Monterey Car Week recap coming up soon. Um, and then we've got our uh, newsletter subscription on there as well, so you can stay stay current with everything we have uh, going on. So Great, that's awesome. Kind of the main ways there. Well, listeners, I'll make sure I put all those links on Patrick's show notes page on the Cars Show website. Follow along with what Patrick and his buddies and friends are doing. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, we're going to get his business partner on the show as well. I'd love to hear his side, Gianni. What an awesome Italian name. Uh, (laughs) You partnered with the right guy uh, to get on the show. But uh, make sure you go to Cars Show and follow along. Enjoy some Corsa Luso coffee. It is absolutely spectacular. I know because I had a lot of it while I was down there during our week <laughs> and it definitely kept me going. Patrick, thanks for being so generous today with your time, your expertise, and for sharing your many experiences with the Cars Yow listeners. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Cheers. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. You take care of your cars. But who takes care of your investments? Tune-ups aren't just for engines. Updating your financial plan is important, too. Your GPS may take you from A to B, but it won't help you on the road to financial freedom. For that, you need a good co-pilot and a very trusted advisor. Chris Kimball, CFP, is just the man for the job. He'll guide you down that road without driving you crazy. 
For over 25 years, Chris has helped people just like you and me with their financial planning and investments. With a master's degree in financial services, he is eminently qualified, and he's a car guy too. Learn more at chrisvkimble.com or call 866-ON-A-PLAN. Securities through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Member FINRA SIPC. CK Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.